Hi everybody, welcome to another edition of Here Lies. I'm your host, Eddie Spaghetti, and today's special featured musical artist is Jupiter 8. Terminator, now programmed to protect. He's the ultimate weapon against evil. I'm power arm, Terminator. But evil T-1000 can take any form. You're no policeman. You're right. Fire! The Terminator, a 1984 science fiction slasher film that propelled muscle man Arnold Schwarzenegger and Canadian director James Cameron to stardom. Though it was never targeted to appeal to youngsters, the Terminator led Arnold to become a standard name for action and a hero for many kids around the world. Oh, well, Terminator. Eventually, we saw T2 Judgment Day, which had Arnold this time as the protagonist, and led to someone pointing out that these kids love this guy so much that they'll want his toy regardless of if he's ripping his flesh off or shooting people in the kneecaps. Of course, I'm a Terminator. But that sort of thing wasn't really taboo at the time anyways. Like Rambo, Robocop, and Toxic Crusaders, Kenner's 1991 Terminator 2 line falls in with a slew of R-rated movie franchise toys. There were three lines of T2 figures including variants of the Arnold T-800, T-800 endoskeletons, the T-1000, and of course a John Connor figure. So yes, Eddie Furlong has his own action figure. But it didn't come with that cool Atari portfolio he had. Power Arm T-800 features three swappable left arms which include a grabbing claw, missile launcher, and battle damage with a hidden spike that could be raised or lowered by pushing a small lever located on the inside of his forearm. His look appears to be based off of the T-800's appearance during the final battle in the steel mill. Note his chest belt of grenades and worn the fuck out body. Blaster T-1000 features a hidden missile launcher attack in the figure's backside. He also comes with a pair of binoculars, because the T-1000 doesn't have any kind of digital zoom feature programmed. He appears to be a tad bulkier here, and perhaps based off of his appearance in T-2 during the Cyberdyne assault. Interesting to note that his figure features next to nothing for articulation, his legs are stationary. So he can't really fit on a motorcycle toy if you had one from another line. I know now why you cry, but it's something I can never do. The front box art for the entire line features Arnold plain and visible. So obviously there weren't any kind of licensing issues in which they had to use an image of someone who looks nothing like him. His mug on the front equals cash and Kenner nicely tried to get more of your parents hard earned dough by putting various plugs on the back for other figures in the line as well as a few vehicles and a playset. Money. Come on! Each figure got a miniature bio write-up and an instructional image on how to function its special feature. Only two vehicles were produced, the T-800's heavy metal cycle and mobile assault vehicle, which was just a convertible with a missile launcher on it. The bio flesh regenerator was the only playset released for the line, but it wasn't exactly a standard playset, more or less a figure accessory creator that would allow you to build fake flesh out of powder, press it onto an odd looking endoskeleton, and then break it off for a wow that was only cool the first time effect. You're like a machine underneath, right? But sort of alive that side. One giant sized 13 inch figure called the Ultimate Terminator was released, but we'll chat about that another time. Now as a little kid, I did not like Terminator. I thought that shit was scary as piss. I did not want to watch the movies. I avoided the movies whenever I could. Model citizen. The problem was though is that I had a cousin who was obsessed with Terminator. He had all the toys, he had the movies. I remember once being at the house where he put one on and I was like, no, I can't watch this, I can't watch this. We have feeling. We hurt. We're afraid. And my mom would always make a big deal of it. She'd be like, don't let him watch that movie. And I'd be like, come on, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's all like super cool and all the kids love him. But no, it's too, too rough. It's not my mother, Todd. 
And here's the odd part. I really liked the toys. I liked playing with them when I was over at my cousin's house. I thought it was cool. I thought like the power arm thing with the, you know, the spike that comes through his arm and stuff was really cool. Um, I mean, I didn't really have toys that kind of did that. You know, it was almost like a, like a kind of verge on a Transformers kind of thing. Batman just punched and threw a batarang and had like his belt come out with a zip line thing. But, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger had like a fucking shotgun and he could make a spike come out of his hand. He could jab into people. And believe it or not, when I started collecting toys, this is probably one of the first lines that I went for because I had such a good time playing with them as a kid and I always really thought they were neat. But again, like I didn't like Terminator when I was really young. Are we learning yet? When it comes to the Terminator figures, here's a rule of thumb. Buy them in big lots. Buying them on their own, each individual figure is gonna cost you maybe about 10 to $15 per figure. Or if you buy it in a pack, Maybe you'll spend about $20 or something like that, maybe 15 to 20, but you'll be getting at least a few figures together and you won't be paying as much as you would for individual ones. Two other pluses, by the way, with collecting for this line. Now the line itself, the figures are not very rare. They were mass produced. Uh, for some weird reason, they're not really considered that much of a huge collector's item and they're still very easy to come by, whereas opposed to, you know, uh, Ninja Turtles, which is up the ass prices, you know, you could buy a house if you had the whole fucking collection. Trust me. The entire Kenner Terminator 2 line wasn't really big in general. You know, there's only a handful of figures that came out, and then after that there were just variants of them. And vehicles themselves, I mean, there was only maybe like two something like that, like his car and a motorcycle. So it's very simple line. It's a very, very simple line to collect everything as a part of. All right, Mr. West, let's see what you're hiding in here. Holy Christ! Why there's a desert in your goddamn closet? Uh, not exactly a desert. I think it's more like a like a vortex or something like that. It takes us to another space or time. Or... Maybe those people there know what the hell's going on here. Hey, where the hell are we? Tatooine? Huh? You mean Tatooine? Whatever. Ah! Holy shit! Hey, geez Louise, I'll do it. for that door. Where can I take a leak? Far left. You know what? I think I'll just use the sink. Hey dude, so I hope you liked what you just watched here. Give us a subscription here on YouTube because you're going to enjoy all the other shit that we're going to be posting on here too. And go on our Facebook page, give us a like on there, check out some of the stuff that we're posting on there like cool photos and old game photos and, and movies and stuff like that. We also have a Twitter account where we, you know, 
the updates about what we're doing, like wearing old ladies Hawaiian shirts with shoulder pads in them, and go on our Instagram account where you can see photos of old ladies Hawaiian shirts with shoulder pads in them, and uh, yeah. <laughs>